it shouldn't be that hard. But yet somehow for WWE, more often than not, they find a way to do just that. Make it really, really hard. God, SmackDown until the end of the show, really, was boring as hell. I don't even think it was just suck. It's worse. Boring. Because sometimes suck can be entertaining. Sometimes suck and train wreck can be the best form of entertainment, at least for me, of all. But this was just... Like, it was a snooze fest until the last half hour of the show. Because we know who came in to try and save the day as much as he could. Um, but yeah, man, just so many things wrong with this week's show. Like, you're starting off with Becky Cringe and Bianca Belair. Um, thanks for running the video package, WWE, to remind us that you were determined to not let Bianca get any shine in her hometown last week. Just had to make sure that Becky was the one, right? Fucking A, that was so dumb. The mic work for this segment was nothing special. Becky's trying too hard, and Bianca's just not really clicking. Like, the girl, nah, uh -uh. Like, it, it's real, you can feel it, but at the same point in time, it's not really helping. It's like, yeah, you gotta come up with something else. Um, so yeah, like, the mic work, not good. And even when you look at when it really started to go down the brouhaha, like, even though Bianca's going to get the shine here because she couldn't get it in her fucking hometown, like, that was intentional. That's petty level Vince all damn day. Even then, you got Becky Cringe still got to get her Cena-like tendencies in there. She just can't take her ass whooping from Bianca Belair. No, it's got to be structured in a way where she gets some shit in, too. That sucks. That's stupid. This opening segment was stupid. How many times have they done, speaking of stupid, like how many times have they done this Intercontinental Championship match with Apollo Crews and Shinsuke? Am I overrating it or overvaluing it to say they've got these guys wrestle several fucking times and it's done? Like seeing Rick Boogs lift up uh, Colonel Aziz or whatever the fuck his name is, like that looked pretty cool, but that was the highlight of this. And even then, I look at Rick Boogs, and I'm like, oh, this Elias ripoff's doing this. Why couldn't they just let Elias do Elias things? But yeah, you're a half hour in. You got a cringy in-ring segment and a blasé match that you've probably seen several times before. The first real interesting thing to happen on the show, of course, was associated with the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. How dare Paul Heyman question his tribal chief? Because Montez Ford sat there and called out the Usos and made some slick-ass remark. Roman said he wanted Montez Ford in the ring tonight, and Paul Heyman's going to question him. Who the fuck is Paul Heyman? Don't you dare question your tribal chief, you jerk. Liv Morgan versus Zelina Vega. Zelina Vega finally wins a match. In her return to WWE. Like how many weeks in a row has she lost? She finally won one. Needed help, of course, but she won one. Gotta take them and fit them in where you can. Liv is okay, but... I mean, oh God. Liv Morgan versus Carmella at the pay-per-view? Yeah, that's gonna be a no for me, dog. Um, there was a lot of that for me on this show. And even when you think about it, is it really true that the demon versus Roman Reigns is the only extreme rules or extreme stipulation match on the entire card. I wouldn't surprise me. That's really, really bad. Um, Happy Corbin is fucking stupid. Like, just boring. Not a cool parody heel. Not any of that. Now you still have time, WWE, to rectify your fucking mistake. Don't make him into another dipshit heel. You had something with him that the people really connected with. The fans were really getting behind. He was resonating. He was truly doing something interesting and unique for the first time ever. And the first chance you got, you blew your freaking load after SummerSlam and went to this happy Corbin shit, and it's stupid! Oh, he's gonna mess up. 
fucking Kevin Owens. Here's Riddick Moss, whoever the hell it was. Who gives a shit? Fuck this. And F you. Took something that could have been legitimately really good and did what you ultimately do with it. You vinced it up, didn't you, Vince? But I know. I know what was designed to make the people happy. See Natalia on our damn TV. Oh, and she's going to take on Nikki Ash. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Snooze fest of a fucking match just so that way Shotzi and Tegan could come out. Oh, my God, they're actually there. Who gives a shit about Shitzy and Tegan? Clearly, WWE doesn't. Why should you? Once you get past the tank, they've got nothing. At least the demon Finn Balor can say, Son of a bitch, I've got two things. I've got the entrance and the body paint. Gotta step up to my game. <laughs> Sami Zayn, I will give him props for giving some really sage advice to Dominic Mysterio. Should listen. Like, I would start listening to your dad a little bit less and less. Like, yeah. And I kind of like where this angle is going. I will give him this, is that especially, like, I know ultimately you're probably going to do the lazy thing of having Dominic turn on Ray. I really wish you would do something really cool here and have Ray turn on Dominic. Like, that would be something that people wouldn't see coming. That would be something that would feel different. That would be something that could also be believable. Is that the overbearing dad is acting like a heel towards his fucking kid that's trying to follow in his footsteps. I'd get behind that more than I would the traditional route of having the son turn on the dad here. Uh... I know many that are watching this review, or at least a lot of people that were watching the show, probably were very pleased with this segment between Naomi and Sonya Deville. Like, oh, look at our suit, Daddy, and look at Naomi feeling the glow, and all this was fucking stupid. This is not good. This is not interesting. Hashtag Naomi deserves better, and yet you idiots are fucking satisfied with this. You're letting this go. Like, the alternative is so obvious here. Just have her turn f and fucking change her character, align herself with the Usos and Roman. That's the story here. Don't be mixing it up with Sonya. Like, we should already be past this. She should be going to the boys and saying, you know what? Like, I need to be with the family. It's believable. It works. A character change, Naomi taking on a Bianca Belair would certainly be interesting to me. So a lot of you are going to be like, oh, the segment was really good. No. There are other wrestlers you could have chosen to do this with. Other superstars. You're doing with this, Na this with Naomi for a reason and for a purpose and it's dumb. It's really dumb. And you just hurry up and stop fighting against it. Put her with the goddamn bloodline. Thankfully, though, we got mercifully to the main event. And I was really wondering. I'm like, damn. We're starting the main event. It's not even 9.30. Well, here's what we know. Is that Roman Reigns is a champion for all. Roman Reigns is a defender of everybody. Roman Reigns is a baby face and a hero to all peoples. He understands that hashtag black wrestling draws. Easy for me to say. Let me rewind it back. Blah. Hashtag Black Wrestling Draws. Look at what he did with Lashley and Big E on Monday night. I got the goddamn guy pulling double duty. If you can't appreciate the head of the table, your tribal chief, if you can't acknowledge how he is the best thing that WWE has going for them, he is the best act, the best thing we have going in professional wrestling right now, period, I don't know what the hell is wrong with you. He pulled double duty. Helped out Raw. Now he's back here. And he's given the spotlight and shine to Montez Ford. And yes, certainly this match shouldn't have went as long as it did. But he's trying to help this young talent that has charisma, can talk, be a character. The types of guys that we need more of in this company. He's trying to help him get that spotlight, get that moment to shine. And they do a good job of it. This match banged. It was good. It was very good. Finish worked. And then absolutely nothing else happened after Montez Ford submitted to Roman Reigns. He got beat up a little bit, and then that's it. That's what happened. Nothing else. 
We don't buy into it. We don't believe the bullshit. Just like you're going to sit there and try and say you have people still to this day try to buy into spread that propaganda and lie about Michael Jordan played baseball. No, the fuck he didn't. He was off saving the universe from the basketball playing aliens called the Monstars. There is a true documentary called Space Jam, greatest movie ever made. Why? Because it's true about how Michael Jordan saved the universe. All of you ungrateful fucks. I tried to sit there and say, LeBron James, LeBron James, he didn't save the universe from the goddamn Monstars. They had Patrick Ewing's powers, and Muggsy Bogues' powers, and Charles Barkley's powers, and Larry Johnson's powers, and worst of all, they had Sean Bradley's powers! We were doomed! Doomed, I say! But no, you got these people who want to sit there and perpetuate these propaganda lies about baseball in Birmingham, Alabama. You want to talk about fake news, a state like Alabama would know about the fake news. Nothing happened after this great match between Roman and Montez Ford. Got it? Get it? Got it? Good. This was easily, easily the best thing about a very boring ass Smackdown. And this is supposed to be the go home show for Extreme Rules. Your last chance to get people hyped up. Hey,